Now, I was getting kind of anxious to talk about this, but I realized waiting this long was probably a very good thing because then everybody who wanted to see the movie has had the opportunity to see the movie. If you haven't seen it by now, you really don't care that much about this movie. So I don't have to worry about any sort of spoilers or anything. First of all, the movie in general. Absolutely amazing. Very well-made movie. Artistic. Uh, just the, the color and the shape and the feel and the grit of the movie carried all the way throughout almost three hours worth of movie, and it didn't feel like three hours. Now, the big thing really isn't, is the movie a good movie? Everybody knows the movie was a good movie. If you didn't like the movie... <clears throat> you kind of got one of those things going where you just, you know, what is it? What is that called? Hipster? Don't like it for the sake of not liking it because it's cool to like it. And so you feel it's cool to not like it because you're cool like that. But the question wasn't whether or not it was a good movie. The question was, how did Tom Hardy as Bane measure up to Heath Ledger as the Joker? As far as The Dark Knight versus The Dark Knight Rises, Christian Bale was pretty much the same in both movies. The art, the sound, everything was pretty much the same. It was more of the same, but it did progress into a new level. And I think a lot of that was due to Tom Hardy doing such a great job. I think Tom Hardy did at least as good a job as Heath Ledger did. Heath Ledger had this costume that helped bring him into his character. Tom Hardy was playing a man that is probably a foot and a half taller than he really is. And he really didn't have much in the way of acting because he had a mask on his face the entire movie. It was kind of getting in the way of his amazing acting abilities. Very difficult to win Academy Awards with a gas mask on your face. But Tom Hardy did an amazing job anyway. The way he moved, the looks in his eyes, his hand gestures, his head motions and his voice. He did a very good job uh, uh, with whatever kind of accent that was supposed to be. Sort of Sean Connery meets Darth Vader, I suppose. Darth Connery. Or Sean Vader. But villain versus villain aside, I think everyone in that movie really did a good job. I really couldn't find anyone that I wasn't pleased with, especially the biggest props probably have to go to Anne Hathaway. Because I was afraid she was going to ruin that movie. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry to say this, but when I heard that she was going to play Catwoman, I was really afraid that the entire movie would be drugged down by a subpar performance. However, I was proven wrong. She did the best performance I've seen her do in any movie that may be due to the fact that she's progressing and growing as an actress and maturing, but that also may be to do in part also as well. Therefore thus and such so. But I think mostly that had to do with the fact that Christopher Nolan was directing, and Christopher Nolan apparently is a really good director. I haven't really seen any of his movies acted particularly poorly by pretty much anyone in them, so feel free to disagree with me on that, but I'm kind of a fan. Now, a final word on Batman. It's been announced that they're not going to do any more movies about Batman, at least not Christian Bale and Chris Nolan. However, there is a lot of serious talk about making yet another revival of Batman uh, that would lead more into the Justice League movie that has been announced that will be coming out. So rather than taking from the Chris Nolan, Christian Bale... Batman and trying to fit that into the Justice League movie, they're probably going to remake Batman yet again, as well as movies for all the other members of the Justice League. Now, let me just be the first to say, I think these two gentlemen would make a perfect Batman and a Robin. However, unfortunately, I'm not in charge of casting for that movie or any movie, but if I could, those guys would be my pick in a heartbeat. Just saying. Something else I wanted to touch on very briefly, is the Olympics. I completely missed all of the Olympics this year, and I feel really bad about it. I kept in touch with the scores, and I watched how many medals people were winning. Now, after watching the Olympics, how can anyone have any doubt about American exceptionalism? And I'm not trying to put any other country down. Everybody did really good, and there were some sports where we got our butts kicked. However, overall, our medal count was pretty darn impressive. It just kind of makes you proud to be an American. Doesn't it? Just a little bit. Now, I did watch one piece of it, and that was watching the women's basketball team, our women's basketball team, crush the French women's basketball team, and that was really cool. Uh, I don't think I've ever been that into a game of basketball. I don't know why. It just sort of, you know, sucked me in. Maybe it was all the, you know, women. But 
even though I'm sad that I missed most of the Olympics, uh, they're over, and for a couple more years at least we can go back to uh, ignoring the rest of the world.